Well, good morning, everyone. It's a few minutes past 10 o'clock, and um, I want to be very respectful of your time as well as the time of our subject matter experts here this morning. Um, good morning. I am Fran Gerbig, Executive Director of Prevention National Alliance, and thank you for um, joining us this morning on this informational session regarding the class standards as a catalyst for, for prevention on learning collaborative. Um, I am excited about this project and excited to share this with prevention organizations across the state of Ohio. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Alfredo Serrato um, from the Great Lakes Prevention Technology Transfer Center, who really is my catalyst for this learning opportunity. Um, as I shared last week during the OPC section, um, Alfredo really was my mentor and coach as I learned more and more about the class standards. And then I'm also happy to have Melissa Cole from Prevention Action Alliance join us. Melissa is a prevention coordinator um, and is working closely with Alfredo and Matt Rusa to develop this, this learning collaborative and training sessions. So um, without further ado, I'm going to say, please take it away. Great. Thank you, Fran. Um, well, um, I want to get going, but prior to that, I want to kind of just do a little introduction of myself, and I think Melissa would like to do the same. Um, Alfredo Serrato, I'm with the Center for Health Enhancement System Studies out of the University of Wisconsin, and I'm very excited to be here. Most of my life revolves around culture and class standards for the past five years or so, and um, one thing I can tell you is that the class standards uh, is something that I've actually grown to uh, respect in, in many different ways. Um, I, I've seen it work in organizations that are struggling to identify what it is that um, is not necessarily working in the area of making their uh, services diverse or even their staff diverse with uh, the workforce shortage that we're experiencing. Uh, the class standards seem to be more and more in demand. And so I'm excited that this is actually coming into the prevention field. And um, we're gonna just, just get going here in a second. I want um, to allow Melissa to introduce herself a little bit and then we'll 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 get started. Thanks Alfredo. Well, as Fran said, my name is Melissa Cole and I'm a prevention coordinator here at Prevention Action Alliance. And I am also like Fran, I am learning so much from Alfredo. Um, he's kind of taking me under his wing and teaching me about the class standards as we go. And I'm also excited to um, bring this initiative to Ohio to incorporate the class standards into prevention services. So with that, we will get started. Alfredo is gonna give us a little overview of the, um, the project and we'll just kind of take turns going back and forth so you don't get tired of hearing one of us talk for a long period of time. And then we'll end today with um, an open Q&A so you can ask all the questions that hopefully will bubble up as, as we talk about this project. Great, thank you, Melissa. And um, the the idea today is to actually go through the, the uh, request for application. And after that, actually go through the application process so you can uh, be comfortable in filling it out. And you can ask as many questions as you like. Uh, if you do have a question, just just go ahead and raise your hand, or um, you know, even better, just unmute yourself and and ask. Uh, so we would like this to be a conversation uh, for today. The uh, <clears throat> this uh, is going to be an overview. Um, the 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 idea behind this, obviously, like I mentioned before, is to allow organizations to uh, take on this. Uh, what I would call a framework, uh, and it's actually two frameworks at work here. One is the uh, the class standards, and the other one is the, the NIATEX model, which is a process improvement model. And then we're taking SPIF, and we're combining all three to allow you to uh, practice them together for the reinforcement of your practices. And so we're gonna get going here. Next slide, please, Melissa. Great. Um, so uh, the Great Lakes Technology Transfer Center is, is uh, has five states, and these five states are uh, Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota. However, uh, the 
this particular effort is only being done in the state of Ohio, which excites me because Ohio tends to be first at everything. And this is uh, something that I think we're trying for the first time. It's had success already with one small group. We did a pilot test uh, with Fran a few uh, years uh, ago before COVID. And uh, now we're getting started again because it works so well. We had 100% participation in that project uh, from beginning to end, which was something that I think was exciting. We also have uh, Ohio University uh, participating through their public uh, service and leadership school and also the Ohio Center of Excellence for Behavioral Health Prevention and Promotion. These are the three entities that are participating in bringing this particular uh, training to you. Uh, the idea for them and for us is to be able to bring expertise, a high quality expertise at three different levels. So the one person that's not here is Matt Rosa. Uh, Matt is an expert in the NIATEX model. Uh, he, it just so happened that this particular date didn't coincide with his vacation. And so um, he was not able to make it today. And so Melissa and I are, are the other two part of the team. And um, we're in our own different way. We're bringing to you the, the highest possible level of expertise on, uh, on these three fronts, class standards, process improvement, and also uh, the prevention uh, model. And uh, this uh, approach is going to be an in-depth uh, approach, bringing training to you. So it's technically an ITA, Intensive Technical Assistance, which brings to you not only um, the, the beginning of, of the training, which is a two-day summit, and, and then after that, some coaching. We're going to come back at the end of September and actually um, uh, finish off uh, strong. Uh, and in, in that fashion, we're going to make this an intensive learning process. You're going to get everything that you learned in the uh, in the, the two-day summit, you're going to put to practice during the coaching sessions and then show off your outcomes at the end. And so the, 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 uh, the coaching webinars are going to be mostly managed by um, by Matt Rosa, he's the master uh, trainer on the process improvement side. However, Melissa and I will also be joining him to answer questions that are related specific to our field. So, um, and I think we're gonna have, uh, my guess, based on previous experience, we're gonna have a ton of fun here. So next slide, please, Melissa. So uh, our training design will bring, uh, again, a three-member training team. Uh, we're going to be integrating uh, these three into uh, these strategies that include cultural and linguistic uh, issues and, and then the organizational culture, policies, and operations. So the, the, um, this combination, I would say, is something that we tried in the past. And one of the key differences that we're making is that we're bringing uh, the class standards and prevention aspects of it right at the beginning of the training. And then we're ending with the NIATEX process so that you can have all the knowledge base prior to actually implementing them. And so these, this combination is gonna be, um, I think, really good for us um, overall. And, and, um, and I think that if, if there are questions along the way, one of the nice features of integrating this, uh, these three things together is that all coaches are gonna be there present working with one another. It's not gonna be an isolated training. So if you're doing class stuff and you need to know more about how to apply it uh, in a particular way, Matt's going to be there. If you want to know how it will affect the things that we do on the field, Melissa is going to be there and vice versa. So this dynamic is going to continue on and on uh, throughout the training. Next slide, Melissa. Uh, the, the first training date will uh, take the cohort into a comprehensive analysis 
out of the 15 national class standards and all the variables to be considered in implementing such standards. So the it's going to be very specific to the prevention field. Uh, and and the, the first day is you're going to get a lot of Melissa and a lot of me and Matt's going to be there. However, uh, it's going to be focused on learning the uh, 15 class standards in full with a whole lot of um, examples to go along with it. So by the time you're done with day one, uh, you should be able to um, know enough to put many of the things that you have in your particular organization uh, in, and integrated them into your practice. And so this is something that I'm looking forward to. This comprehensive approach will provide uh, a lens, a toolkit, if you will, that um, that will just make everything kind of click. Uh, we we we've thought about this for I don't know we we've, we've been working on this for six months now, and and so I think that it's gonna get easier and easier as we go throughout the day because uh, we're Melissa and I are gonna give you all the tools that you need in order to be able to get through it. So next slide. Uh, the second day of the training is when Matt Rosa is going to come. Uh, and uh, well, actually, he'll be there, but he's going to take the the main stage. Uh, and we're going to go through something called a Change Leader Academy. A Change Leader Academy basically um, is a, a training that allows you to uh, figure out what the roles are going to be uh, with the particular change project. Uh, then uh, certain tools are going to be uh, provided to you. There's a total of four different tools that are, are provided to the audience. And then based on that, we start putting them into practice. And um, one of the things that I'm excited about this is, uh, is that, um, that Matt Rosa has been doing this for, uh, I think, over 10 years and when he heard that we were doing this with prevention, uh, he got incredibly excited, so excited that he actually um, uh, connected with another colleague of ours at the organization and created a, a small video that was specific to prevention as well. And that was the catalyst for the conversation that Fran Gerbig and I had in relation to, wait, now, this video kind of gives you an, uh, an awareness level, but what if we actually did an intense technical assistance um, a, you know, model in Ohio for all the prevention organizations? And so with this, you're going to have um, a whole lot of support. It's, and, and the design of it is actually quite exciting. The first time that I went through an IATEX Change Leader Academy, uh, Matt just had this ability to make everything incredibly simple. It's a, it, it, it's in the back or in the behind the scenes. It's something that I think it can be considered complex, but when he takes you through it and he gives you all the tools that you need in order to uh, navigate that, it, it makes it quite simple and enjoyable. So that's something that I will say uh, about this particular model. There's a, and of, of course, there's going to be a lot of hands-on coaching, so you will not be alone. Um, the, um, the, the learning collaborative, and I don't know if I, I'm, I'm trying to remember the slides here, but the learning collaborative will be made up of 12 different organizations. Um, and we're going to take these 12 organizations and basically for um, a period of, uh, let's see, about five months, we're going to give you all that you need in order to be able to implement this uh, and, and 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 get it to good use. So next slide, please. All right. So how much will it cost to join the collaborative? Nada. No dollars. So there's no fee for organizations to participate in the class standards learning collaborative. In fact, you'll you'll receive if you're selected a flexible learning stipend of fifteen hundred dollars. Um, that you can use to help provide travel to and from the live events, um, supplies or 
staff time that you might need to help work on some of these projects. Um, our sponsors are PAA, the Great Lakes PTTC, the Ohio University Voinovich School of Leadership and Public Service, the Ohio Center of Excellence for Behavioral Health Prevention and Promotion, and the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. So huge thank you to our sponsors. So eligibility criteria. So the Class Learning Collaborative seeks applicants from Ohio Moss Prevention Certified Organizations. And I'm going to put in the chat what exactly that means. So you must be a 501c3 or 4, a nonprofit entity. And to be a OMOS Certified Prevention Organization um, in the chat is that good old revised code of what exactly that means, right? What, what do you have to have in place to be a certified? And you probably know if you are or aren't an Ohio Moss Certified Prevention Organization, but that is one of the eligibility requirements. Exclusion criteria, um, applicants from multi-agency consortiums. Um, so this learning collaborative was really designed to strengthen cultural competency prevention practices within just individual organizations. So we're really looking to, to help one, you know, prevention organization or behavioral health organization that, that has prevention services to really define and, and integrate these um, class standards into the prevention service delivery. Organizations involved in other major change initiatives, you have to be able to attest to your ability to manage this initiative along with any other big change initiatives you're also involved with. So this is a big commitment. Um, interest organizations, will hopefully apply to participate. That's you guys that are all on here today are wanting to learn more. So hopefully you'll take the next step and apply to be part of it. Um, organizations that are selected um, will form change management teams comprised of two to four members. And oftenly the team will include change leaders within your organization who demonstrate commitment and desire change in this area because it is a commitment. It is, it, it is gonna be a lot of work and you're gonna need people on the team who can help move that forward. All teams will be required to complete a class assessment to kind of have a baseline measurement of where you are prior to the learning collaborative. So we can truly see your growth and in, in that change over the course of this project. A combination of all team coaching sessions and individual um, organization coaching sessions will be programmed for the three months after the summit. So you'll know after the summit what, when those calls are taking place. You can go ahead and put those in your schedule. All teams will participate in three learning collaborative teleconference calls during the implementation phase to share ideas, successes, and challenges with others that are involved in the collaborative, which is always helpful, I think, to feel like you're not alone, right? If you're struggling with something to hear if other participants are running into same barriers or, you know, experiencing same triumphs, things like that. It's always good to be with your fellow peers and kind of go back and forth. Throughout the process, learning collaborative coaches will provide that technical assistance by phone, probably Zoom, I'm guessing a lot of will be, um, and feedback on your plans, the implementation, which includes a review of each organization's strategic plan prior to implementation. So we, we, we want to know, like, what is the plan moving forward so that we can be on the same page. And at the end of the class learning collaborative, all the participating organizations will come back together to celebrate, my favorite thing, and present their their respective change project in what we call a five by five PowerPoint presentation. So five slides, five minutes. Um, all teams will complete a series of post assessments and surveys about their satisfaction with learning collaborative, knowledge base and class sustainability practices to measure the outcomes. All right, I'm turning it back over to Alfredo to talk about what we hope will happen. So we there are obviously some expected outcomes, and the expected outcomes are based in, in three different areas. Uh, the, the, the first one is uh, changes uh, within the uh, governance, uh, leadership, and workforce area, which is mostly related to human resources. And so what this does is actually allow you to strengthen your base. So... Uh, the class standards are, are, I think, wonderfully designed in that when you approach it, it allows you to gain strength before you try anything else. And so, and that strength is gained at the internal level with governance, leadership, and workforce. And so there are three, um, that first section of the class standards dedicates itself to that. And so if you, if your organization is 
not necessarily having issues with that. You can move on to sections two and three in your projects. However, most organizations today are, are struggling with workforce issues, um, uh, shortages, and also the, the, the ability for that workforce to be culturally responsive and ready to meet the needs of that particular community. And so the um, this particular uh, outcome is expected on that first section if you choose to do that. The second section of the class standards is related to um, communication and language assistance. So some organizations have a really good, diverse and solid uh, governance, leadership and workforce. And then what they need is to be able to implement some of the cultural elements into uh, their particular practice and communication needs for the most part, is the highest uh, need at that particular level. And others, another potential outcome is that third section of the class standards, which is the, um, the engagement piece with the community, continuous uh, improvement, and also the uh, data collection. And so Matt happens to be wonderful at teaching these particular elements, and he will take you through that so that you can learn how to do that while I'm trying to teach you more about the standards. And then Melissa is gonna be kind of guiding us as to how that actually functions within the prevention field. So as you can see, these things really do work very well uh, together. And so uh, the improved outcomes uh, in cultural competence is an organizational culture depend on the sustained focus of these issues. So if, if, if you go through uh, the entire uh, inter inten intensive technical assistance uh, training and collaborative, at the end of it, the hope is that you're gonna sustain whatever it is that you put into practice. And so that's gonna be our focus is in sustaining. This collaborative will also assist the organization in implementing the process uh, and interventions that over time can bring about significant change and and so we've always uh, Matt and I have because we've done trainings like this in the past. We've always had questions from the community as well. The some organizations say, well, we don't necessarily have a whole lot of engagement from particular groups, uh, and and so when we start asking questions, the organization kind of realizes, well. well Part of the reason that they're not engaging is because we're not responding properly to them. And so that that reciprocation uh, that happens is what actually allows for that community to come alive and then come get services um, from you uh, in, in, a, in a bunch of different ways. So that engagement piece is actually something that that's good. Then the other part is that we'll be able to measure. And this is the beauty of this particular summit and uh, collaborative in that we will take uh, an assessment at the beginning. This assessment is going to be um, quite, I think, comprehensive to give you an indication of where you are in the spectrum of cultural uh, and linguistic responsiveness. And so this measurement you're going to take along with you. It's just going to be you. you no one else is going to know these results unless you want them to know. But you're going to measure your growth from the point of contact with us in, in that you're accepted into this particular collaborative. You'll be able to say, okay, this is where we are today. And then you can measure yourself uh, where you will be in uh, September. So th that's the beauty of it, too, is that it's, it's going to have some short-term and medium-term uh, results. Uh, the implementation involves continuous focus on cultural and linguistic issues rather than brief intervention. So the goal of this is it's not a, 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 a one-time training where you take in awareness, you try to figure out where in your programming you do implement it, uh, but rather the integration of the class standards into everything that you do. And so it's not gonna change your models. It's not gonna change the way you do uh, anything that's administrative or anything like that. It's just gonna improve upon that. Uh, 
if you choose it to be. So it's a, a lot of it is your choice. And so our hope is to be able to make a case for certain changes, and then you make the decision on whether you want that change or not. And, and the beauty of this is that um, on the implementation of it, we're gonna start off with one, two projects that are small so that you can learn the basics of what it takes to be a change agent. Once those small projects are in place, you will be able to implement these um, across the organization if you desire. And so the, the collaborative is built on the concept of continuous culture and linguistic improvement. So as, as you move forward, if you're not seeing change, we haven't done our job well. And, and so that's where the coaching comes in. And you can give us a call, you can send us an email, you can come to one of the meetings and ask your questions about why is this not working for me? And because Matt, Matt's been a, in, um, he's been a part of, I think, over 3,500 change projects with different corporations. So you're getting a really good coach when it comes to that particular element. And I, I would make the argument that you're getting a really good coach and Melissa in saying, well, this is the way it's going to affect us if we do choose uh, to implement these. And then I'm going to come in and say, well, if you don't implement these, this is what the cost will be, right? Um, so there's a, a cost benefit analysis that's going to be there. And there's also going to be a very comprehensive guide with Matt Rosa in guiding you through this process so you can be successful. So next slide, please. Well, and I, before I move on, I, I would like to say that hopefully people who get involved in this project won't look at it as one more thing to do, but instead a better way to do what we're already wanting to do or trying to do, right? Um, we want to reach as many people as we can with our prevention message. And so this is a way to make sure that we're doing that, that we're reaching the people we really want to be able to reach. Yeah, and the uh, because we've been working for a few months now on this project, um, we we have some some really 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 good models that we've developed along the way to share with you in this training. And I, I first of all, I want to thank Fran and and Melissa for it because uh, they 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 literally took their their brain power and Matt's brain power and mine, and we combined it all. And so we hope that this is uh, going to meet up with the title, which is a, a catalyst for, for major improvement in, in the prevention field. And the, 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 the thing that I think I will also enjoy is the, the testimonials that we're going to end up getting uh, in September. We, we did this once. In something called a master series and the testimonials that came out of that were pretty amazing uh and and i can't wait to to kind of hear the same thing from you all when you go through it so uh I'll, key dates melissa yep so key dates for the application phase just as a reminder your applications are due electronically to fran gerbig at preventionactionalliance.org and we'll go through this here in a little more specifics but just to have on your radar that those applications are due by May 19th at noon, Eastern Standard Time. Um, and that if you're selected, you'll be notified uh, via email no later than noon on May 26th. Key dates uh, for the learning collaborative phase. So if you are selected to be part of the learning collaborative, the first two days that summit that kind of kick off to this project will take place in Columbus at the, am I saying that a cohatch? Is that how you say that? I'm not from Columbus, so I'm not sure if that's how you do it. Cohatch Center, um, Conference Center. Somebody can jump in. Okay, thanks, Jim. Uh, June 14th and 15th, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. So that'll be a two-day. Matt or um, Alfredo's already kind of touched on that. What we'll go over day one will be um, a lot of me and Alfredo just talking about the intersection, right, of kind of SPIF and class and this kind of crosswalk. And then the second day will be mostly Matt um, walking us through the Niatex process. Um, and then July, you'll have a coaching session, which will be over Zoom, July 27th and 1130. We try to keep the times the same so that you can kind of plan for that. August coaching session would be August 30th, 10 to 1130. 
September coaching session, September 20th, 10 to 1130. And then the final uh, celebration and the five by five presentations would take place again in person, um, September 27th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. All right, instructions for submitting your application. So once you have your application filled out, you're going to either scan it as a PDF or you can save it if you have the ability to save it as a PDF file with the title of your organization as, and I tried to, it didn't turn out great, a screenshot of an example. So you're gonna title your PDF, uh, the name of your agency or organization, class learning collaborative application. And you're gonna submit that in an email to Frank Gerbig at fgerbig at preventionactionalliance.org. In your email subject line for your application should say class as a catalyst for prevention and then your organization's name. So. I have that in the subject line there, just ABC Prevention Agency. So just to give you an example. Once you submit your application by email to Fran, you should receive an email reply within 24 business hours confirming that we've received your application. If for some reason you don't get that, contact Fran Gerbing, again at fgerbig at preventionactionalliance.org um, if you don't receive that confirmation because only applications from agencies that receive an electronic confirmation will be considered during the review process. So it's really important if you submit that and you don't get that response back within that 24-hour business hour to, to reach out and say, hey, did you get my application? So we can make sure that you get considered. Most importantly, the deadline, right? So the application deadline, May 19th by noon Eastern Standard Time. Selection criteria. So you would be considered for review if you complete the application in full. You meet the eligibility criteria we've already discussed. Um, you have those proposed members of the change management team. You know, you have appropriate roles assigned and uh, positional authority to participate in that learning collaborative. And they can also de help develop and implement the class standards organizational change plan. So we really, you know, would be looking for change members or members of your change team that kind of, you've got somebody administratively, somebody maybe boots on the ground, somebody that, you know, has a say in changing like policy and infrastructure, things like that, that can help you move this forward. Because it's great if you've got people on board and you have a plan, but if you don't have anybody that will allow you to move that forward in your organization, it's gonna be a tough, tough road to hoe, right? So you gotta have somebody kind of at each level is what our hope would be. And that your application demonstrates cultural and linguistic means. Um, that participation in this learning collaborative could hopefully address. The application demonstrates the commitment and capacity of the organization to per really participate and dig into this learning collaborative effectively, as evidenced by support from your CEO or executive director um, and the absence of any conflicting initiatives. So if you are involved in other change initiatives that you still have the ability and capacity to manage the time and commitment of this one as well. So any questions regarding this, you know, the RFA should be asked today during our time together. Um, I think we're on till 1130, so we should have plenty of time to answer any questions that you have. Um, any, if you have any questions specific about the application itself or how to submit the application, you, you feel free to email Frank Gerbig again at fgerbig at preventionactionalliance.org. If you have specific questions about the learning collaborative, please reach out to Alfredo um, at alfredo.org. Am I saying your name, Serapto? Yes. At wisc.edu. So with that, this it, it opens up our Q&A. So all the questions you might have around this uh, process. Yeah, and one, one of the things I was going to mention, Melissa, if anyone has questions related to what class is, because I had to assume that everyone coming to the meeting today was familiar with class, but if you're not and you have a question about it, I'd be more than happy to answer that as well. So this might be a question for James. We have Sasha asked, where can we access or share this recording? I know it is being recorded, but where will it be housed, James? Uh, this recording uh, will be available on our website, uh, knowing that we have a, a, a pretty full week of Prevention Action Alliance with the uh, We Are Change rally tomorrow. Uh, I cannot guarantee it will be up by the end of the week, uh, but by early next week, this will be available on our website. Thank you. What other questions do you have?
One of the questions that's come up uh, in, in the past when we've been talking about this is uh, who should we send to the training? Um, and even though we touched on that a little bit, um, I think one of the strategies that I've always recommended is to send someone from uh, the leadership roles that you have in your organization, someone in middle management, and someone that actually works in the field and, and actually has contact with the community so that that way you get all the different levels of experience there and and then you're better informed as to how this might impact any one of those areas once you start learning the content. So I'm gonna upload in the chat right now the um, request for application document that has all of the things we just talked about. And it also has the um, link for the application. Somebody asked, where can we get the application? So Jennifer's question, so this is open to prevention coalition, so long as they have a 501c3 or would a county board office be more suitable? I'm not sure if Alfredo or Fran, if you can maybe answer that. I don't wanna give a wrong answer on this one. Fran, do you wanna take a shot at that? Yes, I'm trying to get my computer to work. Um, you know, there's been a lot of conversation and a lot of requests for uh, prevention coalitions to be able to participate. And um, certainly I would encourage that, but your fiscal agent would need to be a certified prevention agency. Um, so I think that's um, the most succinct answer that I can give you at this point in time. Thanks, Fran. Any other questions? Hopefully you were able to, there were a couple different questions about where can I get the RFA, where can I get the application? I put that as a Word document in the chat, so you should be able to access that, which will have everything we just discussed, plus the link to the application, brand's email, all that good stuff. I've often said that I do my best thinking once the webinar logs off or as I drive away from a meeting. So um, I would encourage people that if you have additional questions as you're kind of processing this um, and sharing it with your colleagues, don't hesitate to reach out to either Alfredo or myself. We'll be happy to, to vet those, those questions with you. I would be interested to hear, since we have a little bit of time, if anyone wouldn't mind sharing in the chat some of the issues that you may be having with your organization related to um, either culture or language. And, and then that way, maybe what I can do is give you a response that's related to how the class standards uh, in combination with SPIF and also the NITEX uh, Change Leader Academy, how that can actually help in, in, in whatever scenario you may be having within your organization or even in your relationship with the community. And so uh, if, if you want to ask some questions like that now, just to see if it's uh, something that you need to consider in terms of, you know, applying um, that something that I'd be willing to entertain um, and and help with. And if you're not, you know, able to um, write it all out, feel free to unmute yourself and share. Just because, yeah, trying to write out a, a whole case scenario might not, you know, be the the best thing. So feel free to unmute yourself and and, and we can chat.
So it sounds like if we were interested in uh, kind of learning more about the class standards or implementing it in another way outside of this opportunity, would you be the best person to contact about that, Alfredo? Well, our our uh, technology transfer center that's based out of the University of Wisconsin, we do class standard training um, that's, you know, like a one one day training. Um, and that's um, that's good if you if what your organization needs is more of a knowledge base of what class standards are. And then you can also take uh, a change leader academy, a CLA as well. But this is the first time we combine the three, the, the, the field um, expertise, the class standards expertise, and the Change Leader Academy expertise. So that's going to be the difference. On, on, on one side, you'll get um, the, the, the specific content of one particular area, but not the combination of it. And so this is what's kind of innovative about this in that when Fran and I discussed this many, many months ago, we decided that the value of having a collaborative uh, is is to be able to combine all three. So it depends on what your needs are, I guess, if that helps you with your question. the Some, some folks just simply need uh, a one-day uh, training uh, just to get familiar with it. Others want to start implementing. And if you're interested in implementing, uh, this would be the, the best scenario um, to do that. So to to uh, if you go to the Great Lakes uh, Prevention Technology Transfer Center website, which um, I can look up real fast and put it on the chat, uh, they will have future uh, trainings that happen uh, probably or say twice a year at this point. We nice. used to do them quarterly, uh, and and now it's not. Thank you so much, James. Yeah, James is much faster than I am. Uh, is it Joan or Joanne? It, it's Joan. Um, Joan. Uh, does the application have to be for an overall organization, or can it be for a program within a large organization? That's a very good question. Um, you know, that's something that I don't think we discussed, Fran. Is but what what's your thought? I I think if it's a prevention program within an organization and that organization is certified as a prevention provider, then I think that would qualify. Thank you. Yeah, and the, and the. Uh, the advantage of that in some cases is that you know you're able to work on very specific areas that you already know uh, need uh, this particular intervention uh, for prevention, which is kind of weird to say, right? So, uh, however, the, uh, uh, the the I would hope that even if you do it for a department, that the hope would be that you take the results there and all the knowledge base. And if it works well for that particular department to start in, you know, sharing that with, with other parts of the organization so that ultimately you can all be on the same page um, at, at, at the end of that process. Thank you. That is a great question though, Joan. I know a lot of agencies in Ohio, um, there aren't a lot of standalone prevention agencies. A lot of prevention teams are part of a larger behavioral health organization. Um, you know, so that's a that's a great question. Mm -hmm. Is another question. <laughs> uh, is there a specific number of um, of programs that you're planning on um, um, granting, or is there is there a maximum number that you're looking to do? We're hoping to have 12 cohort, 12 groups join this first collaborative. So 12 different agency organizations. Yeah. And then each each team would have three to four team members. So. Uh, Fran, do you want to mention the, the stipend that goes along with this? 
Um, yes, I mean, I, Melissa did point that out earlier in the hour, but there is um, a $1,500 stipend um, that is a flexible learning stipend. So to support your staff, your team, um, so that you can make the most of this opportunity. Great question. I do have one other question, <laughs> a lot of questions. All right. On the initial um, June 14th, 15th um, at the conference center, will there be an opportunity to have any kind of virtual um, connection with that or is it only going to be in person? That part will only be in person. And then we'll move to the virtual sessions for July, August, and September. Let me that. Um, my question is that uh, I have uh, three staff who run coalitions. Um, one is the uh, local uh, vape task force, and one is a coalition on suicide prevention. Um, and there are uh, the other ones are a problem gambling coalition uh but we do that in rural response network is something else that we manage here at the agency we have a lot of different folks from the community that are part of these coalitions that need to have that would that may benefit from uh class uh training so can i have our staff um trained the the folks who are the coalition heads trained in the class standards, or do you need the whole coalition body, like four members from each coalition body to be part of that? No, I would think you would want your coalition leaders to be the team members representing your organization. Okay. And they would carry that information back. Yeah, that's what I was hoping that you would say. <laughs> Thank you. Well, and it, it, there's also another advantage to that, Jose, is that uh, if they're uh, they're coming from you know four different areas, that the the amount of um, information that can be shared internally be, between them as to how you know something will affect them, uh, they, they they'll um, they'll be able to apply it in potentially four different ways, um, and so that that will. I think generate some really good ideas um, as as they move forward as a group. So I I, I agree with Fran. It, your leaders should be the ones that are there in that particular scenario. So there's a question about is there a specific format structure for the application? So uh, I was just looking at the RFA, Fran. Is there an actual like application, or is it just you create a word? document and then save it as a pdf with like the need and well so there is a fillable form on our website that people can take advantage of or if you want to download the pdf as it is and build a word form off of that um that's fine too i re realize everybody has different um access to technology and quite frankly i'm the weakest link in my team so i know that my um, skill level sometimes is not always what it needs to be so i Long story short, as long as all the questions are answered and in the order that they're presented in the application, um, if you would like to send me a Word document, I will be happy to accept that. James, is there any way you can put that direct link in the chat where that where that is on our website? Yep, give me just a moment. Thank you. Really, our goal is not to put barriers to participation, um, but really just capture as much information as possible so that we can make um, good decisions and invite people to, to join this. Um, so if you run into issues, again, please reach out to me and let's 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 problem solve together. <laughs> 